Hello everyone. Well, I did it again. Um, I want to go over the reason why I do this. Um, I became a lock collector because I'm a lock picker. So, lock picking is my main drive and lock collecting is just like a side thing that happened to it. So, a lock collector would never drill one of these open. They would just leave it at whatever state it's at. May not even clean it. You know, they just want the appearance, the looks. To me, yes, this is a fascinating looking lock, but I'm more interested in the internal mechanism. And unless you've got, even uh, old catalogs and stuff will not always show you the internal mechanism. So... If you don't have a key and you're trying to get into one of these uh, and it's a lever lock like this is a six lever lock you really got no idea what you're doing or how to manipulate it if you've never seen one of these before i've had this thing sitting on my in my collection for like about three or four months now every once in a while I'll sit there and try to manipulate and figure out something and get nowhere with it so to me what's inside is more important than what's outside so um i do have another uh not this particular brand but another uh lever lock coming in with the key i won't tear that one apart but i wanted to see what was inside this one now i had to drill all these little posts and then get over here and and lever so it kind of like again once again it's it kind of mangles the the stuff up but we reveal a very fascinating little mechanism here. Here are your levers. And I'm going to pull some of these out just so that we can demonstrate how this thing works a little easier. Uh, what I noticed was all of these levers are sitting up here up against this except for one. And one is acting as a toggle for this guy. It's acting as a spring, a return spring for this guy. This spring over here is the push-up mechanism. And this thing looks a lot like a gun and, and sears and stuff like that. But anyways, the way this thing works is... Let me get one more wafer out. A lever out of here and I'll show you. Um, the way this thing works is... Um, it's basically, you don't have to worry about pulling up on the bolt or tensioning the bolt. It's already being done for you. Um, the pressure is being pushed up against this. This is a notch that's cut out in here. And, and when these levers get lined up, in order to meet that, that, uh, that cut out, this little spring here causes this... Uh, piece to come over. Bam. See how fast that did? Once it lines up, boom. That's like it shoots up. Um, it's got this little track here that this rides in. But there's your little mechanism. That's the notch that it's sitting in there. And when it comes back, what kicks it back, what's supposed to kick it back, is uh not this pressure I'm just wondering what causes this guy to lever back like that but they've got everything else figured out once it's like I said once see how this notch is just cut out it can't go forward because these levers are blocking it until you get that little cutout lined up and then when you do it just automatically kicks itself up it just opens up and it's a real pretty good spring on it. Pretty good action. So, uh, yeah, this. Okay. When you push all the way down, this piece right here is what causes it to relatch, to, to close. And, uh, yeah, you just got your different little levers up there, six of them. So, um, the theory would be how you would tension this on the outside would be you would have to manipulate uh 
each lever. Let's see if we can do this. I've got a broken pick over here. That one's too broken. <laughs> I had a broken pick, but that one's too broken. If you could manipulate each lever, see that's not binding, so it's not going to catch by itself. Yeah, I don't know. Even with most of these, you know, with um, three of the levers out, half of the system, you know, gone. Um, still just sitting over here and manipulating it from the outside. Yeah, see, and if you had six, it'd be really hard to get this to, it's not, it's not tensioning, it's not binding them up, you know, like if, if one got on the edge, and that's what I thought might happen, you could do it like other lever locks that it would catch on one edge, but looks like you have to get these guys lined up kind of like all at once, you can't just get one can't get just get one going and hope for the best and they don't just automatic i don't know i really don't know how how um an effective way to to pick this guy you can't overlift you can't overlift these guys if you push too far, you're not going to line up the levers. Yeah, I don't know, but it is a it is an interesting little mechanism there. And uh, once again, it's just amazing how they fit such a complicated little piece into. I guess if you look, if you consider like watches, you know, maybe watches are more complicated, but and tiny and everything, but. Still, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive to me how this all manages to be over a hundred years old. This one is um, patented in 1902. 311-1902. So, there you go. Ooh, today is almost, what, today is three. I should have done this on the anniversary. Today is just 3-3. Three, three. I should have waited till 3-11 to take it apart. But anyways, here you go. I hope you enjoyed that little mechanism and delving into Leverland. Thank you for watching, and happy picking, everyone.